Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics. We continue with our circuits using op-amps and in this situation I would like to discuss a circuit where we have multiple input, in particular two inputs. We have a DC voltage source and also DC current source as two inputs. And again we would like to discuss how we can calculate the required values for that circuit. This will be our example number one. We'll also do another example where we have another circuit with different configuration. Of course we will work out everything step by step. Our calculations also verify these in SPI simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following circuit. We have VS which is 2 volts and IP which is a current source, DC current source, ideal all of them is 50 milliamps. We have three resistors R1, R2 and also the load. And we would like to calculate here the load voltage which is actually shown here and also the load current. And we would like to know what the current delivered by the op-amp which is given by IOP in this direction. And again the op-amp is considered to be ideal. Okay, let's look at our solutions. Now due to negative feedback we have the following situation. These two nodes V minus the inverting input of the op-amp and also the non-inverting input of the op-amp, these two node voltages are equal to each other. So we can set V plus is equal to V minus. And we can also say since this is an ideal op-amp, it has input impedance which is infinite. So we can consider this as an open circuit. That means the currents entering the op-amps are zero. So we have I minus and I plus, and both of them are zero. So we can say this also zero. And this will allow us to do the calculations in a much simpler way. Now we have the following uh, question. First is the load voltage, VL, which is shown here. So how do we do that? There are many methods we can use here. Superposition, by the way, that's also possible because we have multiple inputs. But I will do it specifically with a different method, which is the node voltage analysis. And actually, that is much faster in this case. Now, if I use Kirchhoff's current law at node X, this one, so I labeled that node as X, I can say the following, this current goes down, so I just made the choice, and this current for I R2 go, goes to the right, so from left to right. So I assigned the polarities plus and the minus and also the direction of the current. Then I can say the following, this IP will produce I1 and I2 at node x, that is Kirchhoff current law at node x. Now if I write down each of these currents I1 and I2 in terms of voltages and resistors using Ohm's law I have V minus over the resistor R1. And it's also V minus minus VL over R2 because the voltage drop across R2 is this voltage difference so V minus minus the VL. But we know that V minus is Vs. Why? Because V minus must be equal to V plus due to negative feedback. It's said already before. And since V plus is also connected directly to Vs, this is also Vs. So we can say this node at node X actually is also Vs, which is actually 2 volts. Okay. Now we have the following. IP is Vs over R1 plus Vs minus Vl over R2. Now, if we now substitute the values, we have an IP of 0.05, Vs of 2 volts, R1 100, and R2 of 200. So everything is then substituted here. We have only Vl as an unknown, which is what we require for question A. If I now multiply the left and the right hand side of this equation by 200, so I can get rid of these fractions, I have this 10 is equal to 4 because it will be then 2 over. 2 times 2 actually, because 200 over 100 is 2. And I get 2 minus VL shown here. So that will be then VL is equal to minus 4 volts. So that is already an answer for question A. In a similar form, we can now move on with the current delivered by the op-amp, which is question B. Now that can be also done using node voltage analysis. If I assign now at this node a name, which is then Y, I can say at node Y, applying Kirchhoff's current law, KCL, I can say IOP and I2 will produce IL. That means load current is IOP plus I2. 
Now, we can then express this as IOP is equal to IL minus I2 because I want to have the IOP, which is the current delivered by the op-amp. And again, we can express the currents IL and I2 using the voltage and the resistor, using Ohm's law. So volts over resistors. So VL over RL. And then I2 is this voltage is actually V minus minus VL or V plus minus VL or VS actually minus VL. That's the same thing because due to negative feedback, these two nodes are equal to each other. That's shown here. Now, if I now substitute the value also here, so we have minus four from uh, the step one for uh, question A and VS was already given two. So two minus minus four over 200 and everything here, you will get exactly minus 110 milliamps. And this is now for question B. So we have now question A and question B together. Let's collect them. So VL and IOP. And we know VS is equal to VS. That means also V minus that due to negative feedback. So these are all here as a summary. Let's also simulate this because the simulation results will be required to verify our calculations. This is the circuit I have developed in the simulator in SPI. So you can see if I develop this circuit in the simulator using the values, I get minus 110 milliamps. That is the current error here for measuring the current in this branch. I also measure this node voltage, which is minus four, exactly actually what we have calculated. You can also do another analysis. You can say, I will also produce a table which give me more information. So this circuit will also produce a circ table. And now this table results shown here. So we have an IOP minus 110 milliamps, this one. And VL is shown here if it's minus four. So all of them actually are correct. So we have verified our calculations. Let's also see this in the actual simulator. So how we can generate this table and also I'll show you also how you can make these uh, values in the measurements in the simulator. So let's now jump to the SPICE simulator. All right, guys, we are now here in the SPICE simulator. You can see the VS and IP are two input voltage source and a current source. R1, 100 ohms, and R2 of 200 ohms. This is the ideal op-amp, and this is the current arrow for measuring the current in this branch. You can insert a current arrow going to the meters and in this one click on it you'll get an arrow and you can change the name by double click on it one and you can change the name here by label this is the load voltage of 50 ohms and this is the pin where you measure your voltage and that's also from this meter so you go to meters and you take a voltage pin click on it and then you can all again change the name here now if i remove these two i can now do the following on this circuit I can say analysis, DC analysis, and go to the calculate node voltages. This produces the uh, values for the meters you have placed in your circuit. It doesn't mean that only the voltages are displayed, but also the currents and other values you want to measure. So you can say directly minus 110 milliamps and also minus 4. What you also can do in addition, because there's a pen here, you can click on any component and then it will be highlighted here as resistor the voltage of the component, also the current of the component. So let's see. This one, for example, will give you minus 4 volts and minus 80 milliamps. If I click on this one, I will get 6 volts and 30 milliamps in that direction from left to right. So depending on what you want. I said in the discussion that this voltage was 2 volts. So at this node, so I can click on this node. You can see 2 volts here. But you can also click on this node. It will give you also 2 volts. So and also at this one, you can also see two volts for R1 and also the its current. So you can see due to negative feedback, this node and this node are both two volts. Now you can also generate a table. So you can again go to the analysis, DC analysis and table of DC results. Now you get more information. So more details are produced. So again, you can click on anything you want by clicking with the pen and it will be highlighted in red. You can see here minus four and minus 80 milliamps. You can also click on just this node here and get directly that minus four. And you can also see the IOP here. So everything is actually shown here. So there's more information if you do the table of results. But if you're more interested in just specifically these two 
the current and the voltage, then this will give you directly the results you want. And it's actually much nicer. All right, guys, this is it for this example one about the multiple input amplifier using an ideal op amp and with two DC uh, sources, one DC voltage source and one DC current source. We will move on, of course, with more complicated examples in the future video. So if you have any questions about this or any other video, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time. Another interesting video. Take care.